and one. Here we go. We're going to start today off with a powerful quote. The quote says this, only the guy who isn't rowing has time to rock the boat. <laughs> what a profound quote. That is, only the guy that isn't rowing has time to rock the the boat. So this was the quote that I got as I opened up my uh, hashtag Rise and Grind Planner like I do every single day. The Rise and Grind Planner has quotes at the uh, very top that are submitted by actual Rise and Grind members, which right now we're still collecting quotes for next year's planner uh, up here for the next week or so. So if you'd like to submit a quote for us to put in the Rise and Grind Planner, you can do so. Just DM me or uh, shoot me an email, whatever. We'll get it in there. Um, but as I got up this morning, wrote down gratitude goals, all those things, got up at 3 a.m. And I read that quote, only the guy who isn't rowing has time to rock the boat. And so that quote was submitted by a guy named Josh Overseen, also known as Josh. Oh, and we actually use Josh O's name and picture in the uh, hashtag Rise and Grind song because for a long time he was a staple of Rise and Grind. He never missed an episode for the first, I think, two years um, plus. So he was he was always in here, and so he submitted the quote. And Josh O is a very unique individual who I love, love, love with all of my heart. And so as soon as I saw the quote, I was like, okay, I got I to gotta know what this, I got to know more about this quote. And so uh, not only is it a profound and beautiful quote delivered to me today via Josh O, originally it was a quote by Nobel Peace Prize winner Jean-Paul Sartre. Jean-Paul Sartre, S-A-R-T-R-E, who uh, Jean-Paul wrote many, many articles. He wrote books on existentialism and was a tremendous boat rocker himself, which I think is uh, just absolutely fabulous that his quote was about people not being boat rockers, but he was totally a boat rocker himself. And in his expressions and theories, right? In all the different articles he wrote, the books he wrote, uh, he wrote all these things. They were all theories around the human condition is really what they were. And his primary idea, his primary idea was that humanity, we are condemned to be free. Condemned to be free, which almost stands, seems like an oxymoron, right? Like condemned, we associate that with bad, like condemned, and then free, we associate, associate with good. So it's almost an oxy, oxymoron, but it was really interesting, his primary idea of you being condemned to be free, and here's kind of what he meant by that, your being is not determined. Therefore, you must create your own existence for which you are then responsible. Okay. Man is condemned to be free because once thrown into the world, he is responsible for everything that he does in other words. Right. But what's interesting is in his theory, in his belief system, there is no creator. There is no creator. There is no God. It's only you daily creating. And therefore, when you remove God or you remove a creator from the picture, you are left alone with no excuse. No excuse. You can act in the today without being determined by your past which ultimately your past is always separated from who you are. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday does not determine your ability to create your today or tomorrow. And I think it's a fascinating theory. And though it is ultimately contrary to my belief system, I do not believe that there's not a creator. I believe exactly the opposite. 
that there is a creator. So though it is contrary to my belief system and my understanding of life, purpose, and humanity, I am literally delighted. I am always delighted to have my ideas of reality challenged. I delight in that. You see, whenever my ideas of humanity, of of life, Whenever my belief systems are challenged, it is always a moment of growth and also one of deeper conviction. I'm going to say that to you one more time for the people in the back. I am delighted when people challenge my belief systems and my understanding of my life and the world around me. I am the I am delighted to have my idea of reality challenged because it is always a moment of growth and also one of deeper conviction. You see, all perspectives serve a purpose, my friend. All perspectives serve a purpose. Always remember that. And with that, I now present you Episode 966 of Hashtag Rise and Grind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? You see, there's no excuse for you not pushing yourself to the next level in order for you to create a new you you must have a new mindset when teams come together we can create things that are greater than the sum of all of their parts Welcome to Hashtag Rise and Grind. I am your host, Glenn Lundy. I am a husband to one, a father to eight, and the creator of what is going to be the number one most watched morning show in the world. It is 5.30 a.m. and I hope that you are ready to rise and grind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you, my friend? How are you, my friend? Dude, today is Monday. That's right. Today is Monday, September 20th, 2021. And what's crazy is today is the very first and the very last time. It'll ever be Monday, September 20th, 2021. So I want to make sure we make the absolute most, and I do mean the absolute most, of this absolutely incredible, incredible day. Listen, I hope you had a amazing weekend. I hope you had an incredibly memorable uh, weekend. I hope you had the opportunity to create memories that will last a lifetime. That is my my hope for you and your weekend. I hope that it was a blessed weekend. I hope that it was a safe weekend. I hope that it was a healthy weekend. I know for a fact that there are many people around me, people in my circles, people that I know and love that are battling different things and had some struggles uh, this weekend. And so I come from a place of extreme, extreme gratitude because my family, we did indeed have a pretty impactful, memorable, incredible uh, weekend between the opportunity that I had to go to Universal Studios uh, with my son, Joel, him and I got to spend a couple days together staying at the Hard Rock uh, Hotel right there on the Universal Studios property and uh, really just wearing wearing those properties out, man. <laughs> wearing those properties out. It was really a spectacular experience. Uh, I hadn't had a lot of opportunities to just hang out, just me and my boy. 
And so we got to do the rides, the Fast and the Furious, and the uh, got to see, you know, Harry Potter and the Hogwarts stuff and so on and so forth and just spend really a whole lot of time together. It was it was amazing. And then as soon as we got home, uh, we actually left at 530 yesterday morning from Orlando, flew home. And as soon as we got home, uh, we got home in time to celebrate my daughter Meredith's birthday. So Meredith's birthday kicked off at one o'clock. Uh, my wife did it up big because she always does. So we had about 40 people over at the house celebrating uh, Miss Meredith. And it was just really really spectacular, right? She's six years old. And so truly it was a blessed weekend. It was, it was a blessed weekend. And to add to that blessing, this was my second one-on-one -on -one with my kids in so many weeks, right? Last week I went, or last weekend I went on a trip to Disney World with Meredith and got to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with her in Disney World. And then this weekend, it was my son at Universal Studios. So this was my second one-on-one -on -one trip in so many weeks. And dude, I'm telling you, I am learning so much about myself and I'm also learning so much about my kids. Like I am learning so much that I did not know about my kids. I just didn't know. You know, when you're in a family our size, you pretty much do everything together. Everything is a together thing. There's very few things that are solo. If you're lucky, maybe, maybe, maybe you get to go to the bathroom by yourself. But every, other than that, everything in our house is a team sport. It's just how it works. And so what I didn't realize is with everything being a team sport, a lot of... Um, of the intricate pieces that make each of my kids individuals can kind of get hidden because there's a different dynamic when you're in a group than there is when you're by yourself, right? One-on-one -on -one conversations are a lot different than one versus 10, one versus, you know, 20, one versus a thousand, right? And so I'm learning so much about my kids. I mean, Joel and Meredith are two very, very, very different humans. Which is crazy when you think about it. I mean, they have the same parents. They come from the same exact environment. They grow up in the same, you know, they live in the same house under the same roof. They're even schooled by the same teacher, right? My wife homeschools them. So, I mean, their day-to-day -day experiences are the same, a little bit different perspectives. Joel's nine, Meredith's six. Joel has dark hair and brown eyes. Meredith has blonde hair and bluish gray eyes. Don't know where that came from. But they grew up in this exact same environment, but yet they are completely different. Joel is very structured, very organized, very much likes rules and order. He reads the signs. He follows the rules. He does not like roller coasters. He much prefers water and he's not in a rush. The end of day one at like 3.30, he's like, dad, we've already been here seven and a half hours. I think it's time we call it. I'm like, okay, son, whatever you say, right? Whereas Meredith is like all the way, go full throttle. She's six years old. She's got her hands up on the roller coaster. She's screaming with pure joy and glee, right? And she's pushing me until 11.30 at night, each night that we're out there, right? completely different and she doesn't care about any rules she's incredibly independent she doesn't care what anybody else is doing she doesn't care what anybody else says she is going to move forward in the direction and the path that she so chooses period even yesterday at her birthday at one point she disappeared for like 40 minutes we're like where's mare she's in her room by herself playing with her toys that's how she rolls right zero she doesn't fall into peer pressure none of that stuff so they're completely different And I find that fascinating considering they have, they grow, they're, they're from the exact same environment, right? So it's as though contrary, contrary to Mr. John Paul Sartres, if I'm saying his last name, right? Contrary to Mr. John Paul Sartres theory. Each of my kids do seem to have 
a due north. Each of my kids seem to have an essence. Each of my kids seem to have a purpose to why they're here. Now, have you ever felt that way? Like, have you ever felt that you have a purpose? Have you ever felt that, or have you, have you ever experienced that in others? Like, have you ever seen other people that seem to have this incredible purpose, right? They just seem to be super in tuned or super in line. Uh, maybe, maybe it's your children. You see, you see purpose in them. Maybe it's, Maybe, maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's family members. Maybe you see like these family members that just, they just seem to know exactly where they're, where they're pointed, right? Like, I don't know. Go ahead and answer in the comments if you feel that way, or if you've ever experienced that, I'd love to hear from you. Well, this week, and it's really funny because coach Isaac just kicked off on uh, breakfast with champions talking about the same thing and him and him, him and I had not talked about this at all. It's crazy how God works. But this week we're going to really identify like, what is that? What is that, that you feel, or maybe you've experienced or see in others? Like, what is that pull? What, what is that? Those, those, those desires that you have inside you, that, that, that calling or that, that, that purpose, like ultimately, how do we, how do we define it? Sometimes it can be perplexing, right? How do we how do we define it? How do we get super clear on that? That thing that you feel and that I feel. How do, how do we understand and follow our own individual true north? All that and more this week. But first, Let's dance, baby. <laughs> yes. Let's go. Coach, can you believe that's where I was at today? Literally, as soon as you started talking, Coach, I was like, golly. How amazing is that? Hey, for those of you that know and those of you that don't know, this is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. That's right. I need you to hit that share button because I believe if we can change the way people start their day, it'll make a massive impact on this planet. I truly believe that. And sometimes all it takes to change the way somebody starts their day is for you to hit that share button. This is also the part of the show where I want to say good morning to you and I want you to say good morning to me. Whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay, say what's up and I'll say what's up back. Fair enough? Fair enough. What's up, Navia? Great to see you. How you doing? Sweet thing. Sweet thing, go 314. <laughs> what's up, Alloy Artist? Great to see you as well. How you doing, Linda Sims and April Johnson? I'm glad you're here. What's up, Cheryl Bailey Mitchell is in the house. We got Paula Collins is up in here this morning. How are you doing? Oh, knocked my microphone. How you doing, Tina Bacon? Great to see you. What's up, Whitney Wells? Your son has a definite purpose. Yes, he does, Whitney Wells. Yes, he does. What's up, Christine Elliott? How you doing? I brands. Great to see you. What's up, Markel Tucker? We've got Kim Fair up in here. Amanda Sanders in the building. Paula Collins. Gail Beecraft. Great to see you. What's up, Doug Thurston? My man. Always supporting the cause. What's up, Jody Castor? Hodgnaki. Great to see you. How you doing, Janice Mullings and Dr. Rowe? What's up, Cheryl Bailey Mitchell? We've got Tristan Smith is up in here this morning. Sarah McCord and Tamara Andress are in the building over on the clubhouse side. I see my man Scott Simons and Amanda Dahl and Justin are here as well. I'm gonna keep on scrolling down. What's up, Jackie? How you doing, Tim and Kim? Oh, is that Kim? Yep, it sure is. Kim Walsh Phillips, great to see you. Liza Myers Borges, 
is in the house. What's up, Tom? How you doing, Sue Graves? I'm glad you're here. How you doing, Brian? Brian Incy, I'm glad you're here this morning. What's up, Lee? How you doing, Brittany and Deborah? We've got John and Erica. Kim Garner is in the building. How you doing, Riza? How you doing, Clarissa and Belinda? What's up, Joyce? I see Crystal Sakar. What up, Crystal? We've got Jacob Abiola is in the building. Great to see you as well. What's up, Ed? I also see Emily Galler and Jeremy Noling are up in here this morning. West Storm, Sherry Barnett, Regina Fleming is in the building. Terry LaPierre, it's a packed house today, and I love it. What's up, Michael O'Brien? How you doing, Christine Elliott? I'm so glad you're here. Listen, while I have all of your attention, for the next about uh, 60 hours or so, I am doing a buy one gift one. That's right, buy one gift one for the uh, hashtag Rise and Grind 1000th episode celebration that is happening November 5th in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, for the next 60 hours or so, when you buy your ticket, now this excludes VIP tickets, but when you buy your ticket, we're gonna gift a ticket. Now, whether that if we can gift it to someone that you choose if you want, or we can gift it to someone that we know uh, just can't quite afford it, but needs to be at the event, has this burning desire to be at the event, uh, those types of things. So buy one, gift one. So if you've still been thinking, maybe you're on the fence, you're like, I don't know if I should go, don't do it for you, do it for someone else. Go to growforgod.com, growforgod.com. You need to go there today, tomorrow at the latest, and it's buy one, gift one for that particular event. We're gonna pack the house, it's gonna be spectacular. All right, let's finish up today's episode of Hashtag Rise and Grind. Oh, wrong. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. All right. And I need to take that down to 317. Okay. Check it out. All right. Sorry about that. I got to, I'm, I'm trying to do something a little bit new. Okay. D listen, true north. We're talking about true north, right? True north. True north means exact. True north means not one degree off. Okay. Not one degree off. True north means you are pointed. True north does not waver, okay? It does not waver. Everything else can move around it. Like when you're on definition and on purpose, everything else can move around it, but you will stay true. You know, I remember watching America's Got Talent back uh, a few years ago when I used to have a little bit more free time. I used to watch a bunch of America's Got Talent. And I would always be blown away by the kids, right? The, the six-year-old kid with uncanny gifts and, and abilities. These untrained, raw, and pure individuals that would just blow all of our minds, all of our hearts and minds away, right? Like, like, like for example, uh, this young lady. Okay, I think I got it.
But yeah, that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Like that little girl's like nine years old, dude. That little girl's like nine years old and she's absolutely killing it. And it's raw and it's untrained and it's just this gift, it's talent. And I'm always blown away by that. I'm like, dude, that's true north. That's true north. Where does that come from? Right? Like, that's just raw. It's real. Like, if you look at people like Kobe Bryant, right? Kobe Bryant played basketball his entire life, right? True north. Ever since he was a kid, right? Natalie Portman. She's been acting. She's been an actress since she was a young child. True north. On point. She's one of the greatest actresses of all time. I'm absolutely fascinated and in love with the brilliance of Natalie Portman. Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore actually got her first acting gig when she was eight months old. She comes from an entire family of actors and actresses, but she did her first gig when she was eight months old and has been acting ever since her entire life. True North, Beyonce, right? Beyonce, lyrical genius in every sense of the word. She's always done music for as long as she can remember. Michael Jackson, another, a, a, a true North who lost his way later in life, but spent his childhood and his early years completely on mission and on purpose, completely 100% aligned. Look at somebody like Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio has been acting since he was a child. And as far as I'm concerned, is one of the great actors of my entire lifetime his ability to just completely take over the personality of another of another is unbelievable you can't teach that it's raw it's real it's true north like literally their entire lives that's all they've done they've done what they were made for it is exact, it is pointed, it is never wavering. And to me, it's fascinating. It's fascinating and it raises the question. I think everybody got kicked off of Facebook again today. <laughs> it's fascinating and it raises the question. Like, how do I get there? Right? How do you and I tap into that? <laughs> How do we get aligned with our individual true north? You see, we're going to explore this question this week. But for today, today I'm going to give you this. Esther 4.14 Esther 4.14 in the Bible, it says this. Perhaps this is the moment for which you were created. May this be your moment. As coach said this morning, that is my prayer. May this be a week of alignment for you. May, be, may this be the moment that everything in your life gets better, more clear, more exact, more true, more pointed. May this be the day that everything begins to make sense for you. That all things start to connect and to align and to point you towards your true purpose. Listen, friends, contrary to Jean-Paul Sartre, who I can learn so much from, contrary to his belief, I personally believe that you and I are children of God, the God of the universe. And that that God made you to be the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. Not an average version, not a little bit above average, not a little bit below, but the absolute best version of yourself that you can possibly be. And that all starts with teeny tiny decisions, right? Small, little, seemingly 
meaningless decisions, like a decision to show up here today, a decision to, to, to log in, to chime in, to listen in. Your decision made an impact on me. And that's how it goes in life. Every single decision you make ultimately matters. It has value. It has worth. You see, you impact the people around you, your friends, your family members, your coworkers, all of them. And as you continue to step into your greatness, it makes a positive impact in all of those around you. So listen, let's do this together. We will rise each day with intention and purpose, evolve into the absolute best versions of ourselves that we can possibly be so that we can go out there and make an impact in other people's lives. And the best part is you ain't got to do it alone. I'll do it with you. Let's do it together. Fair enough? Fair enough. Listen, if you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. There's a bunch of them up there. If you would like to buy one, gift one, go to growforgod.com. Go to growforgod.com. Come join us in Lexington, Kentucky, November 5th. Absolutely spectacular. Tamara and I were working on it a little bit yesterday. It's going to be over the top come join us <laughs> come and join us in that room but go to growforgod.com get your tickets buy one gift one if you want to hang out and talk about this a little bit more we're going to be hanging out over on clubhouse all day with incredible programming so come join us over there um, but most importantly have an incredible day come back here again tomorrow morning 5 30 a.m because we're going to do this all over again on hashtag rise and grind we'll see you my friend stay well stay well Hashtag rising grind, hashtag rising